Jan Madhyasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Chartesu Avigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva, O all pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisance unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kim vapurer ishwaraha. Sadyohidi avurudite tra. Kriti bihi sususubhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturor galitam falam sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam muhur aho rasika bhuvibhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantakstu Abhadrani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nastaprayesu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhavo Kamalo bhadayaschaye Chete tare navidam Stitvam satve prasidati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijnana Mukta sangasya jayate When these purities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Pidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya chiyante chasyakarmani Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text 48. Tadidam Bhagavan Rajan Eka Atmatmanam Swadrik Antaro Nantaro Bhati Pasyatam Maya Yor Yudra Translation purported by Srila Prabhupada. Therefore, O King, you should look to the Supreme Lord only, who is one without a second, who manifests himself by different energies and is both within and without. Purported by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The Supreme Lord, Personality Godhead, is one without a second, but he manifests himself by different energies because... He is by nature blissful. The living beings are also manifestations of his marginal energy, qualitatively, one with the Lord, and there are innumerable living beings, both within and without the external and internal energies of the Lord. Since the spiritual world is a manifestation of the Lord's internal energy, the living beings within that internal potency are qualitatively one 
with the Lord, without contamination from the external potency. Although qualitatively one with the Lord, the living being, due to contamination of the material world, is pervertedly manifested, and therefore he experiences so-called happiness and distress in the material world. Such experiences are all ephemeral and do not affect the spirit soul. The perception of such ephemeral happiness and distress is due only to the forgetfulness of his qualities, which are equal to the Lord's. There is, however, a regular current from the Lord himself, from within and without, by which to rectify the fallen condition of the living being. From within, he corrects the desiring living beings as localized paramatma. And from without, he corrects by his manifestations the spiritual master and the revealed scriptures. One should look, into, uh, one should look unto the Lord. One should not be disturbed by the so-called manifestation of happiness or distress. But he should try to cooperate with the Lord in his outward activities for correcting the fallen souls. By his order only, one should become a spiritual master and cooperate with the Lord. One should not become a spiritual master for one's personal benefit, for some material gain, or as an avenue of business or occupation for earning livelihood. Bonafide spiritual masters who look unto the Supreme Lord to co cooperate with him are actually qualitatively one with the Lord. And the forgetful ones are perverted reflections only. Yudhisthira Maharaja is advised by Narada, therefore, not to be disturbed by the, ver the affairs of so-called happiness and distress, but to look only unto the Lord to execute the mission for which the Lord has descended. That was his prime duty. Why did the Lord descend? Well, there's external reasons and internal reasons. External reasons are he came to deliver the devotees, annihilate the demons, and reestablish the principles of religion or spirituality. And the internal reasons was he noticed that Srimati Radharani was more ecstatic than he, and he wanted to experience those transcendental relationships, uh, the, trans trans the transcendental feelings of Radharani. He also noticed that there was something in him that put her into ecstasy all the time. So he wanted to experience what that was in him that put her in such ecstatic states. And he wanted to relish the mellows of pure loving relationship that she was experiencing uh, with him. Okay, so there are external reasons and internal reasons. Now, the, there's so many important points here, but the point that's being made over and over is that one should not be disturbed by the happiness and distress in the material world. How can you do that? So the happiness and distress, happiness and distress is already a duality. And this material world is a world of duality. And that's in stark uh, comparison to the spiritual world where that duality uh, doesn't exist in a way that puts a person into illusion. Uh, so there's always going to be a duality in a sense that the Lord is the Supreme Personality of God and we are his servants. That's not going to change. But the duality that puts people into illusion is, is much more nefarious because uh, it bewilders people. And in their state of bewilderment, they become uh, sinful and they become disturbed and they become uh, ready to do crazy things like suicide or to uh, kill somebody, etc. So, this is the sad state of the 
human condition. So uh, it said that all living entities are born into de delusion, overwhelmed by the dualities of love and hate. So that is our sad situation in this world. So the only way to overcome that is the definitely explained by Krishna. First of all, he says, Ichadresa samutte na dvandva mohena bharata sarva bhutani samohan sarge anti parantapa oskaina bharata, o conqueror of the foe. All living entities are born into delusion, bewildered by dualities arisen from desire and hate. So Prabhupada explains that the real constitutional position of the living entity is that of subordination to the Supreme Lord, who is pure knowledge. When one is deluded into separation from this pure knowledge, he becomes controlled by the illusory energy and cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the condition of everyone in the material world. 99.9% .9 of the people. So therefore they're experiencing this duality of love and hate and happiness and distress and they're disturbed by it. And that disturbed state of mind they're bewildered and uh, they think the solution to that problem is making more money and having more sense gratification. But that's not the solution. The solution to the problem is to become free of that false duality because the soul is basically not influenced by it. That, that influence in this sense, it doesn't, there's no such thing as a chemical bonding of the soul to matter. It doesn't exist. The soul is completely independent from matter. But yet, through the subtle mind and the false ego, people suffer unnecessarily due to false identification with the body. The body is the cause of all misery. And as long as we're attached to the body and bodily relationships, we suffer. It's like one, just yesterday a lady was telling me that she has a friend of hers who uh, suddenly died. And she was not real old, she was in her 50s. And she has several daughters who live in the United States. They live in India. And their daughters are pregnant. And she died. It was great stress for her daughters and her husband. And then just recently her husband died of the Chinese flu, COVID-19. And this put the daughters into more stress and anxiety. It's such a tragedy to lose your mother and father in such a uh, horrible way and, and relatively quick, quickly one after the other. So what do you say to such people? Uh, they, they're bewildered. They're suffering pain. And uh, the pain of separation, the pain of losing their loved ones. But actually this whole thing is based on sense gratification. If they really love the mother and father, then they should become pure devotees and save them. But are they going to do that? Do they even know that that's the solution? No. They're in complete ignorance, unfortunately. And unfortunately, they suffer unnecessarily. So Prabhupada writes a letter to uh, a devotee, his devotee Upendra, October 9, 1971. And he says, Deluded by desire to enjoy the material world and becoming envious of Krishna, one comes to this material world. Ah, so every one of us have become envious of Krishna at one time. And because of that envy, we have left the spiritual world and come to the material world to be Krishna's competitor. We want to be Purusha. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. That mentality, I want to be the enjoyer. So what does that mean, I want to be the enjoyer? That is that one thinks that they're independent and not really controlled at every stage. Uh, the devotee is always controlled by the mercy of Krishna and the non-devotee is always controlled by the onslaught of Maya Devi or Durga Mata. So, 
Therefore, deluded by desire to enjoy the material world and becoming envious of Krishna, one comes to the material world. And therefore, they f we forget our constitutional position as the eternal servant of Krishna. And that uh, the oneness with Krishna is always agreeing with them and engaging in devotional service. That's the solution to being affected by duality. In duality, we get bewildered and we say, well, should I do this or should I do that? Should I invest in this stock or that stock? Should I marry this person or that person? Should I live in America or should I live in India? Or should I work for Amazon or should I work for Microsoft? There's all these dualities are putting people in bewilderment and it's only because that they do not have this oneness with Krishna. Oneness with Krishna means you always agree with his point of view, his advice, his directions, his dictation. And therefore, people are unnecessarily suffering. People are unnecessarily confused. And people are failing unnecessarily in the purpose of the human life, which is go back to go back to Godhead. We came from there because of this perverted sense of enviousness of Krishna. And that can be corrected in this world through the association of genuine devotees and uh, regularly reading the purports of Srila Prabhupada and hearing the verses spoken by the greatest devotees in the history of the world and, uh, and by Krishna himself. Just like now we're hearing Narada Muni's advice to, Yudas, uh, to Parikshit Maharaj not to be forlorn that he has lost uh, uh, so many, uh, let's say, uh, great uh, personalities like his uh, exalted family members and so forth. So Prabhupada now says <clears throat> uh, that although qualitatively one with the Lord through devotion, through agreeing with the Lord's advice and following it, the living being, due to contamination of material world, is pervertedly manifested, and therefore he experiences so-called happiness and distress in the material world. What does it mean, pervertedly manifested? Pervertedly manifested means that he has a material body that's subject to the laws of material nature, and those are implacable laws. We cannot change them. We cannot overcome them. So our, our identity if we identify with the body, is pervertedly manifested. And we see that every day. Black lives matter, white lives matter, green lives matter, blue lives matter. All this uh, identification, racial, ethnic, national identification, all false. They're all called upadis. Just like one time in uh, Berkeley, California, when I was there, the president of the temple, uh, I got a phone call from a the Lodi name, uh, I think his name was Lila Nanda Prabhu. He was a disciple of Prabhupada. So he says, uh, Hello, Hari Vilas Das. Uh, my name is Lila Nanda. I'm the president of the Bay Area Vaishnava Sangha uh, uh, Lesbian and Homosexual Society. And I want to preach to my community by bringing them to the temple and teaching them all about Srila Prabhupada and Krishna. I said, you're not allowed. He said, what? Are you against the movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? I said, no, I'm not against Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's opinion. He said, then why are you saying I can't come to the temple with my community? I said, because you have too many adjectives well, well, what does that mean? Too many adjectives. I said, this uh, Bay Area Vaishnava lesbian and homosexual Sangha. There's no such thing. Said, what do you mean there's no such thing? Are you a homophobe? No. You are homopsychotic. He said, what? I've never heard that before. Well, now you've heard it. You're psychotic, a homopsychotic. I said, Prabhupada never said that there's such a thing 
for a devotee. Devotee is free of the upadis, of all false identification. You just went through a long, adjective-driven explanation of how you are overwhelmed by many upadis. Therefore, you cannot come to the temple on that false premise. If you come as an individual without any upadis, we will serve you, we'll wash your feet, we'll serve you prasadam, you have complete access to the temple. But if you come with all those adjectives, you're not allowed here. I said, you're allowed here if you come as a devotee, which means no upadis. You identify as the eternal servant of Krishna. But you come here identifying yourself. I said, next week, somebody else will call me up and say, oh, Hari Vilas, this is the Bay Area pedophile man love society, and I want to bring my community to your temple. So, <laughs> you, you see the point? Uh, one after the other, and then, you know, some other group will call up with all these upadis. So everyone is invited to the temple, but without these adjectives. Just come as a simple devotee who's dedicated to serving Prabhupada and Krishna without any false identification. So, he got really angry. He spread the rumor around, rumor around all over the place that I was a homophobe and against Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement, blah, blah, blah. So, fast forward. Two, three years later, I get another call from Leela Nanda. Oh, in the meantime, he was coming to the temple as an individual, right? And all his friends were coming as individuals, right? So, and going, and uh, they were uh, volunteering for uh, Rathi Yatra and this thing and that thing. So now, fast forward, I get another call from Leela Nanda. And he said, oh, Hari Vilas, I have some sad news for you. I said, what's that? He said, I have AIDS and I'm dying of AIDS. I said, well, I'm very hard. sorry to hear that. I said, uh, is, is there any way I can help you? He said, yes, please send a brahmachari uh, so that he can read Srimad Bhagavatam to me and m help me cook and, and clean up a little bit in my uh, apartment. I said, well, I'll definitely send you someone, but I'm not sending a brahmachari. I'll send this woman who I know is a very good devotee. She'll cook for you, she'll clean and she'll read Bhagavatam for you. He said, I don't want a woman, I want a brahmachari. I said, I'm not sending a brahmachari to you. I said, that's like sending the chicken to the fox. And he got angry and he hung up on me. And then after that, I heard he died. You see how sick people are? They can't get rid of these false identifications. You know, right? So this is the sad state of affairs. And this was a person initiated by Prabhupada. And I'm sure he was chanting Hare Krishna somewhat and so forth. But he couldn't get this sickness out of his brain. So, therefore, Prabhupada says here, we should try, or the devotee should try to cooperate with the Lord in his outward activities of correcting fallen souls. That's what we're supposed to do. Correct we should try, souls. or the devotee should try to cooperate. Uh -huh. By his order only, one should become a spiritual master and cooperate with the Lord. Now, everyone can become a spiritual master. That is, someone who's representing Krishna as he is, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and trying to help others understand who Krishna is to get out of their sick state of duality and become one with Krishna by always agreeing with Krishna's point of view and Krishna's instructions and following them strictly. One should not become a spiritual master for one's personal benefit, for some material gain, or as an avenue of business or occupation for earning livelihood. Bonafide spiritual masters who look unto the Supreme Lord to cooperate with him are actually qualitative one with the Lord, qualitatively one with the Lord, so, qualitatively one with the Lord means that they are such uh, ananda vigraha. They have eternal. Uh, they they have an eternal soul, which is full of bliss and knowledge. But they're not equal to Krishna. They have the same quality, just like the gold in a gold ring and the gold in the gold mine are equal qualitatively, but not quantitatively. So that's why he says, 
uh, bona fide spiritual masters who look unto the Supreme Lord to cooperate with him are actually qualitatively one with the Lord, and the forgetful ones are perverted reflections only. So, Narada Muni instructs, uh, I'm sorry, he's talking to Yudhisthira Maharaj, not Pariksit Maharaj. He instructs him not to be disturbed by the affairs of so-called happiness and distress, but to look only unto the Lord in, to execute the mission for which the Lord has descended. That is his prime duty. Our mission is to bring all the uh, spirit souls who are deluded and suffering in the material world back to Godhead. Harinam Sankirtan ki jai Srila Prabhupada ki jai Nitai Gora Premanandi Haribo. Are there any questions or comments? Elaborate on this uh, statement by Prabhupada. One should not should not become a spiritual master for one's personal benefit, for some material gain, or as an avenue of business or occupation for earning a livelihood. Well, what happens if you do that? You'll be a complete failure. At first, everyone will take initiation, so many people will take initiation, but later on they realize that the spiritual master, so-called spiritual master, has impurities. And those impurities are contaminating the disciple also, because the disciple imbibes them through the teaching and example of the so-called false master. Just like there was this one person in uh, Chopadi, he was a very wealthy man, and uh, he met Prabhupada on many occasions, but he never took initiation. Why? Because this is after Prabhupada disappeared, he explained this about himself. He said that every time he would meet Prabhupada, he met him as if he was a businessman and he used the same techniques that he uses in business. That is, when he meets someone, he tries to see what their weakness is, or weaknesses are, and then he exploits them for his benefit. So he tested Prabhupada every time he met him to see if he was lusty, or greedy, or if he had some upadis, you know, just like someone will say, Jai Hind, right? Or someone will say, you know, uh, Muslims are the chosen people, everyone else is kafir, right? So these are upadis, these are false identifications. So he said every time he met Prabhupada, he tried to test him to see what his weakness was. He said, and for my, uh, let's say, uh, misfortune, Instead of surrendering to Prabhupada, I was trying to see if he had any weaknesses. And I did not take initiation. And I regretted that uh, later. Uh, so, this testing the guru to see if he has a weakness, it's not a wrong thing. One should test a person or observe a person before you take initiation and make sure you're not going to take initiation from someone that has the same foibles that you do, right? <laughs> if you have, if you're greedy, if you're lusty, if you get angry, uh, on, uh, you know, for any little reason, uh, you want someone to help you get over that. But if that person has the same, uh, let's say, weaknesses, they're not going to be able to help you. So, but at a certain point, you have to stop, uh, you know, trying to find a fault and, uh, and surrender. However, uh, here it says, one should not become a spiritual master for one's personal benefit. So why does somebody want to become a guru? You see. Now everyone should be a guru. Say. Prabhupada, and Lord Chaitanya has given that order that everyone should become a guru. 
But that doesn't mean that you become a guru for business. You become a guru to help everyone else go back to Godhead. That's Krishna's purpose. And sometimes a genuine representative of Krishna, whether they have the title or not, but they're acting in that position. So you don't need a title. Like, for example, Narada Muni never took sannyas. Does that mean he's not a sannyasi? No, he's, the, he's better than a sannyasi, right? But he always remained a brahmachari. So it doesn't matter whether you're brahmachari or sannyasi or grihasta or vanaprastha or a brahmana or a chatriya or vaisya sudra. You can become a pure devotee and representative of Krishna, and that means you become a guru. You're, you're leading other people back to Godhead. So, uh, this idea that you need the title is not actually factual. And, and I've read this before, but I'll read it again. Prabhupada says in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he says that... <clears throat> There are many members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness who work very hard in their office or in the factory or some other place, and whatever they earn, they give to the society. Such highly elevated souls are actually sannyasis and are situated in the renounced order of life. It is clearly outlined here how to renounce the fruits of work and for what purpose fruits should be renounced. So, He's saying that even the grahastas are acting as sannyasis. So you don't need the title. What you need is the qualities. See? So, and then, but if, you're, if you say, well, I want to become a guru because they get the mahaprasadam and they get dakshina and then I can support myself uh, and uh, don't have to work and uh, people will pay for my airline tickets, I can fly around the world and collect more dakshina and build up my bank account. And, well, that's not a guru. That's a businessman. <laughs> so, and uh, anyone who has that mentality in the position of guru, they get caught. They can't hide it. They'll eventually get caught no matter how good they give classes or how flashy they are or, or how good they speak or whatever, you know, they're going to get caught. And and then that, that becomes a shame to the whole institution. So therefore, uh, Krishna says, Ya imam pushpadam, ya imam paramam guyam mad bhakti swabhidasyati, bhakti mai param kritva mam ivaisasi samsaya. Nachatasman manusye sukaschit me priya kritama, bhavita nachame tasman anya priyaturu bhuvi. He says, for one who explains the supreme secret, meaning Bhagavad Gita, to the devotees, pure devotional service is guaranteed, and at the end he will come back to me. There is no servant in the world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. So this is what we should strive for. We should strive to be like this, to know Bhagavad Gita and explain it as it is, as Prabhupada, is, as Krishna gave it originally, as Prabhupada has translated and commented. If we do that, we are acting as guru. You don't need the title. Okay. And if you act as a guru, you will help, you, you will help Krishna achieve uh, his goal, which is to bring everyone back to Godhead, to get them out of this unnecessary suffering in the material world. So, but if you do it for a business, you won't be able to even get yourself out of the cycle of birth and death. In fact, you'll go deeper into it because you're pretending to be something that you're not. And that people will find out. And for one who is honored, dishonor is worse than death. Okay. So we should not put ourselves in such a precarious situation. Better just to be a humble devotee and be a representative, pure representative of Krishna. That is real Guru Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Any other questions? Thank you very much.